Alright quick, which Shin Megami Tensei character is a half-demon high schooler with a lot of strength and he climbs a tower to fight a godlike final boss? If you said Demi-Fiend, you're full of shit. It's Akira Miyamoto, the star of Shin Megami Tensei If's final, most difficult route. Now, there's a lot to talk about here, so much in fact that I figured this should have its own video instead of being tied in with the others. We aren't going to be wandering around the sin theme worlds of the Expanse from before on this one. And you have no idea how happy I am that I never have to see the world of Sloth again. Akira's route features a fresh setting, the Tower of Confinement, complete with a new set of bosses, music, and characters. Lucky for us, the tower is conveniently divided into sections. So, one last time, let's take a dive into each one and see just how good Akira's route really is. Even before you find this guy, everyone basically tells you the same thing. Stay the hell away from Akira. Choosing his route is like willfully making a poor decision. You're just gonna end up in some kind of deep shit, and that's exactly why you wanna do it. After playing Reiko's route, where she's mostly gentle and just wants to take care of her brother Hazuma, there's some kind of morbid pleasure in just throwing that to the wind and siding with a guy who wants nothing more than to rip the dick off of whoever ruined his day. To get Akira on your team, first you have to be on New Game Plus, and then you have to reject every other possible party member. After that, you head to the janitor's closet where there's supposed to be an exit to the school somewhere. This is clearly not a well thought out plan. You hop through and somehow you just leave the entire main setting of the game behind, and you end up falling to the bottom of the Tower of Confinement. It honestly feels like you're just clipping out of the game and ending up somewhere you're not supposed to. Even Hazuma says he's surprised you made it this far. Like, we just jumped into a hole in some dude's closet, man. How the shit did we end up here in the first place? Now, it takes Hazuma about 30 seconds before he just knocks you guys out, and when Akira wakes up, this demon called Amon possesses him. From here, there's only one way up, and Hazuma's waiting for you at the end. So, you dust yourself off and start the beginning of a long climb to the top. Now soon enough you learn that this tower is broken up into chunks called Nomos. Right now we're in the Nomos of Earth, which is kind of like a prison for the other demons, I guess. Just like the World of Pride, the Nomos of Earth is simple enough and is basically an introduction to the game. There are very few traps or puzzles here, and the place overall is kind of just a warm up to get you started. Now it might just be me, but the encounters here seem to be a lot more difficult than before. I found myself dying in this section more than a few times, and sometimes the amount of enemies I would encounter at a time would be as high as 6 or 7. Now there's no school anymore for you to go back to and heal up, so if you die you just get sent back to the start of the tower or the section you were in at the time. After exploring this place for a while you come across these special rooms called mausoleums. These are unique to this route. Each one has a demon in it that will wipe the floor with you if you try to fight it. When you go up to these guys, you'll immediately notice though that you can persuade them now. Yeah, you can negotiate with the bosses here. Basically, these guys can join you, but only if you meet certain requirements that they don't really explain. The first one, Sebek, requires you to have a relatively high strength stat. The thing is, even if you have this, you still have to fight him and he will absolutely beat the shit out of you. I kept trying this guy and I even grinded up to level 15 for like an hour. Still couldn't do it. It only hit me though after a while that you don't actually even have to fight this guy. Or any of them really, it's optional. Yeah, they don't even attack you, you can just press leave. So I did. But you're not done yet, no, you come across Hathor next, and I gotta say, I prefer this design to the other one. Damn. But yeah, she can beat the shit out of you too. The way of recruiting Hathor is even more obscure, and I really don't think there's anywhere in the game that tells you this, but you have to talk to her specifically on a new moon. If you do that, she'll just join your party, no fight required. Now, since I told you this, I highly recommend you do it, because she's level 35 and it's literally not even two hours into the game. Finally, you find Thoth, and to nobody's surprise, he'll body you in about two minutes. But, one out of three ain't bad. So you keep going higher, you find a key that opens the door of the next section, and the first real boss of the game comes out. Now generally, the music in this game is pretty good, but this new boss theme kicks ass. The Akira route easily has some of the more memorable tracks of this game. This shit pumps you up while you're fighting him and he goes down pretty easily. Even if you don't have Hathor or the other demons, grab up some guys, fuse up a demon that can buff, and it shouldn't be too hard. And then with that, we move on to the first Nomos. Now again, this place isn't too hard, there's still barely any traps to be spoken of, and you'll find your way through just by wandering around long enough. I was expecting the game to go ape shit and hit me with one-way doors and pitfalls and stuff, but surprisingly, there aren't any in the entire section. At some point, you hit a floor that is absolutely huge. 
And that's because it's a town, but you still get enemy encounters in it and all the shops are empty. The reason for that is a boss located in the center of this floor. Now, the pass of the boss I thought was pretty convoluted. I mean, you're not dealing with any dumb traps, but there are these damage floors that'll just hurt you and give you paralysis and poison and shit. It's just there to bother you. The path is pretty long on your first run through because you're not really familiar with it, but if you end up dying to this boss and leaving a few times, you're going to start to memorize it pretty fast. This boss though, man, Bushasta, listen, I hate this thing. I hate it. Interestingly, according to the wiki, this is the only game she appears in. Good. I found this to be more difficult than Hazuma's final form on Reiko's route. Let's take a look at what she can do. Look at this. She can silence your spells, put you to sleep, paralyze you, cancel your buffs, and debuff you. That's a lot of shit to deal with this early on. Here's why I think it's frustrating. You're probably thinking to yourself, Marsh, you dumb shit, just use buffs and debuff her. Yeah, you're right, do that. For this fight, you have to find the demon with Rakunda, and one that can boost your attack. It will drag on for literal years if you don't. The only thing you can be 100% sure of in this fight is that she can't cancel out debuffs, so whatever you debuff her with, it's stuck. You'd also be smart to have a demon that can cure paralysis. Now even if you come perfectly prepared though, you can still just get fucked. If she paralyzes the demon that can cure paralysis, well, you're stuck now. If she paralyzes that demon and some of your buffing demons, you might as well just restart. If you lose out on being able to buff, she's just gonna debuff you into hell and then you're stuck again. I swear this witch can read minds, like the fact that she's only in this game gives her some kind of power on the real world. All of her hateful energy is just concentrated in these 15 minutes that she exists in the Mega Ten universe. I was never able to successfully cast a Kunda on myself to cancel out her debuffs. Every time I tried, she would put the entire party to sleep and then paralyze a few of us. So you have to get a little lucky. If you can debuff her defense fully and keep yourself up with like one or two offense buffs, you'll be fine. I think you should bring Archangel too. He has this move Heat Wave and it'll melt her ass once your buffs are set up. Now after she's finally over, the town's back to normal, you can pick up a few free items and you're good to go for the second Nomos. But before you do that, stop by the casino. Yeah, we're back on the gambling shit again. It's pretty important though because you can get luster candies, final saves, and some good armor. That all depends on how long you want to stay here and gamble for coins. Personally, I played this Kino game for a few minutes and got enough for like 9 candies and 9 final saves. At least then you have a quick way to buff and protect yourself from instant death spells for bosses. I would highly recommend getting these because this is actually the only casino in this whole route, and just like with Hazuma's final form, they're gonna save your ass on the bosses here. When you think you're ready, hit up the stairs and move on. By now, surely you're expecting a teleporter maze or some kind of pitfall that tells you to go die and just drops you back to the bottom, but surprisingly there are still barely any puzzles with this section. It's a mostly straightforward series of rooms with only a few brief dark sections to come across. There are a lot of encounters here though, I mean look at this shit, eight of these monkey things, you think that's enough? The weirdest part about this section are these rooms where a girl is just standing there in the dark. She asks you to close your eyes, and you have to do this to pass through the room, otherwise you just get kicked back out. So you do it right, and then you're on the other side. That's it? I mean, I don't know man, I feel kinda dirty after that. Well, I lucked out that time. Turns out there are more of these rooms, and each time you pass through one, there's a chance that you get turned into a fly. Yeah, a fucking fly. All your stats go to 1, except speed, which is 40, so you're not very effective at combat. If this happens to you, find a healing fountain and get that fixed because it can get you killed pretty easy. If you navigate these floors properly, you can actually minimize how many of these rooms you pass through, but it can be pretty tedious if you're not exactly sure where to go. You know, speaking of flies, this guy is a fly too, and before long you're at the boss, and it's another fly. Well, this boss can kill your entire party on the first turn if you're not ready for it. Look, I mean, all my debuffers and buffers are dead, so I'm just screwed. What you want to do is immediately use one of those final saves you got from the casino. I hope you got final saves from the casino. You can also cast a spell to block instant death attacks, but I didn't have it. If your speed stat is high enough, you might use this item before she can cast that spell. You also just might luck out and she won't cast it at all. What happened for me was that pretty much, once my party was set up and my buffs were good, it was fine. You just have to luck out and get that up in time. Once you have her debuffed, like the other boss, she can't cancel these out. She also has less of a variety of ailments that she can put on your team, so she's kind of easier. 
Apparently she can turn you into a fly, but I've never seen it work. This boss isn't too hard once you get past that first turn, honestly. Just keep refreshing your final saves, and eventually she'll go down. From there, another pretty easy floor is down, and we move on to the third Nomos. This part is a little more difficult to navigate, but there's still really not any traps. Noticing a trend here? In Reiko's route, most of my difficulties were with the design of the dungeons and the gimmicks they had, but here it's been the opposite. The boss encounters and even the random battles are much, much more challenging than the main routes of the game. It's almost like a mirror of what we talked about before. The third Nomos has you going up and down to get where you need to go. Sometimes you'll climb a couple floors and then go down a couple, find a different path, go back up. It sounds kind of confusing, but it's really not that bad. Also, this place looks exactly like the casino, just a lot bigger. There's a surprising amount of dialogue in this section. Now, it only amounts to like a paragraph or two at most, but you learn more about Amon's background story and how he relates to the boss of this section. That's another cool thing I've liked about Akira's route so far. The bosses have a lot more personality, they seem to talk more and have just a little more depth to their character. When you reach the boss, Mammon, you might have some trouble with him. He's got another mountain of health, but I don't think he's quite as hard as Bushasta. One annoying thing he can do is drain your MP with his attacks. If you don't have MP restoration items, it can be kind of tough. I had a few and I ended up using all of them. My tip for this one is use the spell Tetrakarn to reflect his physical attacks. Now if you have Hathor, she knows it, and Akira can learn it. Essentially what's important is that you cast it before he attacks. It's like I said before with the fly, I think that comes down to your speed stat and which attack he's going to use. If you can manage to get up his shield in time, it'll reflect a huge amount of damage back. At one point I reflected like 700 damage in a single attack. It can really help you out. It's obviously possible to beat this guy without reflecting his attacks, but just be aware, it's going to take a while, and he can now cancel out buffs and debuffs. Once you beat him, as usual, the doors open. But there's something else we can pick up that'll really help us out in the coming sections. You remember Hino Kagatsuchi from the main routes? Oh yeah, shit's back, man. We can get Hino Kagatsuchi in the sector on the 19th floor. There's a specific teleporter that you have to enter on a full moon, and then you'll be taken to the sword. If your strength and stamina stats are both 25 or higher, you can pick it up. If you have the stats, there's no reason not to take this. This thing kicked ass before, and it's gonna kick ass again. Now after this, you're on the fourth Nomos. Now this is more like it. This is the dungeon you've been waiting for, the one that'll make you want to tear your dick off and just throw it on the floor. We got dark rooms, we got teleporters, one-way doors, and entire floors where you can't use your comp. That means no negotiation, no summoning, and no checking your map. It's like they just saved all the traps and bullshit for this one section. Well, this part is tough, and the demons don't let up either. I really don't blame you if you google a map for this section, especially in the parts where you can't use your comp. Not being able to use your map is just really frustrating, and you really have to rely on your observation and memory if you just don't want to keep going through the same one-way doors and dead ends over and over. Some of the worst parts are sections that are both dark rooms and no comp rooms, so you just have to bounce off the walls and shit until you pop out somewhere. If you're using an emulator, then you'll probably have the minimap, but on original hardware this wasn't here. Also, you have to refresh this map with a spell that most demons know, but somehow I ended up fusing it away on some other demon. So this part was pretty frustrating. Be careful. As if the teleports and all that weren't enough, this floor has like four mini bosses that you can fight. Including Cthulhu. Yeah, it's fucking Cthulhu, and he'll shove his tentacles up your ass if you're underleveled or unprepared. The main boss of this floor is one that Hazama threatens you with at the start, this dragon thing. He's actually not so hard. If you have Hino Kagetsuchi, just buff your attack, debuff his defense, and just go to town. If you don't have the sword, do the same thing. He's got a lot of health, that's basically it. Now after that there's more dungeon, and you eventually, kind of unceremoniously, end up on the final stretch of the tower. The Nomos of Heaven. Well, Hazuma gives you his little don't mess with me speech, and if you're around the same level as I was, you hit one random encounter and it wrecks your ass. The enemies on this section are really tough. I was around mid-50s, which is around the same level I was when I beat the final form of Hazuma back in Reiko's route. That's not enough here, you're gonna wanna grind. Maybe even hop back down onto the fourth Nomos and just pick on some of the weaker guys. I'm not shitting, the people up here are tough. One problem I noticed while I was grinding up here is that there's not another healing fountain or an item shop on this whole section. 
Yeah, the last one was actually seven or eight floors back down, so fuck that. I'm not walking all the way back through that teleporter invisible room mess again. Try to stock up on some healing items before this part. My strategy was basically only to use the MP of Akira, because when he levels up, you get a full restore. Your demons never level up, so at this point, if you use their spells, that MP's just gone forever if you don't have any items. You level up pretty rapidly on this part, so you can use Akira for healing and instant death spells, and within a few battles, you're back up to full. Try to be more prepared than that if you can, though, because it's better to be able to use your full list of spells on all your demons, instead of just hoping that you level up before his MP runs out and you're screwed. Besides the difficult encounters, this part kind of tones down the puzzles. I guess they thought Nomos 4 was enough. There's some teleports up here in a couple dark rooms, but really, it's not quite as bad as anything else you've seen at this point. Just try your best to get to the top in as best shape as you can. These guys will wear you down, and certain monsters have massive pools of health that just seem to last forever. Eventually, the rooms start getting more compact and smaller, and the tension starts to rise a bit. You can just tell you're near the top, getting ever closer to the final battle with Hazuma. And it's really the final battle this time, since it's the last route. After a long-fought series of boss battles, you're ready for anything this guy can throw at you. Here were my stats when I reached the end. Level 61, 999 health, and maxed out strength. I'm fucking ready, man. So the last door opens, and there it is, it's Hazuma. You trash talk each other a bit, he does the transformation, and it's time. Your palms are probably sweating by now, right? What am I about to say about Hazuma? He has 100,000 health and uses instant kill moves every turn. He inflicts status ailments with every hit. He's immune to physical damage. He- Oh, he's dead. Yeah, Hazuma doesn't get buffed at all on this route. He's just as easy as before, except more so because you're even stronger than in Reiko's route. So after a not-so-hard-fought battle, you just beat the final boss of the route, and essentially the last challenge of the entire game. What do we think, then? Akira's route is definitely worth playing, and if you've beaten the game once and haven't tried it yet, I highly encourage you to check this out. I mentioned in the main review that this game makes you feel like you're alone in a strange world, and that's true of this route too, but in a completely different way. If you've played Nocturne, you know what I mean. In a game like Nocturne or Hell, even something like Doom, you're alone, but completely able to just kick ass. Akira's route almost reminds me of like a prototype of Nocturne because you're just punching the shit out of everything right from the start, and you don't stop until the demon god is laying on the floor of his throne room. Whereas the more gentle Reiko has you feeling like alone and curious about the nature of sin in the human mind, Akira just tosses that shit out immediately and has his eyes on the top of that tower from the moment you start. The tower really works well with the theme of revenge because it's an uphill climb. It lets your blood boil while you get your ass handed to you all the way up, and when you finally reach the top, the battle with Hazuma is practically a curb stomp. His fight's almost like a reward for putting up with the increased difficulty. The story's even simpler and boils down to just fight Hazuma, but this route manages to pack in a lot more detail from the dialogues with the bosses, to the recruitable plot demons, to the knowledge that Akira gains from being possessed by a demon. The tower feels mysterious, but not creepy like the rest of the expanse. To me, it feels like one last training room, one long challenge for an experienced player to finally put the last nail on the coffin of this game. You know, the game knows you're ready for it this time, and it doesn't pull any punches. Also, if you really think about how many people Hazuma killed, I mean, look at all the zombie students, he kinda deserves to get punched out in at least one of these routes. Anyway, to sum it up, yeah, play it. If you like the gameplay of If, you're gonna love this route. You'll definitely feel the challenge on this route. It's one of the more satisfying games I've beaten in recent times. I wasn't really sure how I felt about If when I first played it, but ever since then I kept coming back, and sometimes I'd play it for hours at a time. It feels kinda sad to see it go, though I'm sure there are a lot of secrets that I left undiscovered. For now, this is it for Shin Megami Tensei If. I hope you guys take the time to check this game out if you haven't yet. Like I said before, there's not much online about it, and even less about Akira's route. If you've played this route, let me know what you think about it in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.